are listening to Read This Book, a Prince George Public Library podcast. We gratefully acknowledge that we conduct our work on the ancestral lands of the Clayley Tene. Hello, everyone. I am Leslie. Each episode, a special guest will tell us about a book in our collection that has inspired, surprised, or captured them, and why we should read it. Our guest today is Christopher. Christopher usually enjoys books that teach him something new about the world or how people think. He also likes to read books that are thought-provoking and challenging, books that are outside of the norm or quirky in their styling. His favorite authors include Margaret Atwood, Jasper Ford, Douglas Adams, and J.R.R. Tolkien. Christopher reads in all kinds of genres, dabbling in fantasy, dystopian, comedy, history, and gaming. The last book Christopher read was The Console Wars by Blake J. Harris, and his favorite childhood book is Number the Stars by Lois Lowry. Please welcome Chris. Chris, we're so happy to have you here today. Oh, thank you, Leslie. This is very, very exciting. So, Christopher, you're known around these parts as a gaming librarian. And so my question is, how long have you gamed? Is this something that's been a part of your whole life? Oh, goodness. Yes, more or less. Gaming is one of my first memories. If we're basing it off of first memory, gaming has been a part of my life since I was probably about three or four years old, going all the way back to the Sega Genesis console. Uh, Yes, I wasn't a Super Nintendo kid. Uh, I had a Genesis instead, and so I got to know Sonic the Hedgehog very well. And then from that point forward, I've just always had some gaming console of some kind. I am not console monogamous. (laughs) I I like to have all the consoles possible just because I want to experience everything that there is. So if if you're locked into one thing, you miss out. I only knew Sonic as a kid. It wasn't until I was, you know, in my double digits that I discovered there was a thing called Super Mario. Wow. And that there was Super Metroid and all these wonderful games. I'm like, I wish I had this, but didn't have exposure to. Awesome. So I, I will admit that I am barely a gamer, but the one of the things that I love about games that I see today are the the stories and the world building, especially in, I think in these like epic games. And I'm just wondering if you would say that storytelling is something that has advanced in gaming in like, you know, the 40 years since it first started. Oh, for sure. And before I answer this question, I will backtrack and say... <laughs> Uh, never dismiss yourself as not a gamer. I tell people this all the time. Have you ever played solitaire on your computer? Yes. Then you're a gamer. Oh. You don't need to have, you know, oodles and boodles of games and know every single character under the sun to be a gamer. If you've ever loaded up something on your phone just to pass the time, you're a gamer in my eyes. But yes, has story telling developed in games? Certainly. I can't say that every book that I've read has made me cry. Just like every <laughs> video game. That I played hasn't made me cry, but there are rich worlds to be told and how you interact with them varies. I think it's become easier now to interact with the stories in games and you're not just looking at pixelated characters anymore and trying to fill in the blanks of the story. You're not relying on minor dialogue within these older games. You're now getting these fully scripted cinematic experiences for better or worse. You know, there's sometimes where you're playing a game and you know okay i'm going to put down the controller for 20 minutes because it's a cinematic now and i'm just going to sit and watch this thing play out and then i'll pick up the controller and play again but because it's gotten to that point games are so rich in story and hence why i like to consider myself the gaming librarian i can't solemnly swear that i am the world's best librarian in the entire (laughs) world If you assume that a librarian is someone who is well-read, who has read every single book in the collection, I cannot say I'm that librarian. However, if you look at our gaming collection, Mm. I can tell you that I've played every single game on that shelf. Wow. Basically, those plastic cases are my books that I peruse through. I love that. I love that. Thank you. That was beautiful. We are actually here to talk about your book today, and your book is called Ask Iwata, Words of Wisdom from Satoru Iwata, Nintendo's legendary CEO, written by Satoru Iwata. Yes. So tell us, Christopher, why we should read this book. All right. If you do not know, Iwata was the late president of the Nintendo game company, so he had been president 
roughly from the mid 2000s up until the mid 2010s. So for those who are very detailed gamers, uh, you'll know that as the life cycle of the Nintendo DS and Wii console all the way up through the 3DS and the Wii U uh, just on the precipice of the Nintendo Switch wow. in terms of lifespan as a president. However, he does have a very candid history with Nintendo. He started as a programmer way back in the 70s and 80s when Nintendo was still uh, new to the video game market in a way mm -hmm. and is most responsible and why I will always love him for my all-time favorite character, uh, Kirby. Oh, He is the creator of the little pink puff that everyone uh, loves and adores. Yes. And so the reason why you should read this book is it gives you insight into not only the way that Nintendo works and thinks. So as much as I would like to say that as a company, they are thousands of people and, and, and sort of that hive mind. In some ways, yes, they are. But in other ways, they are also a reflection of their president at the time. Mm. And very much looking at Nintendo in that 10 year span, Askiwata sort of sheds light into, OK, this is why they were such innovative thinkers. This is why you have the Nintendo Wii, which I do believe is the best selling console of all time. Holy moly. It just skyrocketed <laughs> wow. um, in popularity. And you go, OK, how is that? And as you read through this book, you're like, OK, I can see, you know, uh, Satoru Iwata sat down and said, let's do something different. However, that being said, when I first started reading it, I was treating it as a history text of Nintendo. What I walked away from this book with is actually how to become a better leader. And so that was something that I wasn't expecting to come away from. But it's it's split into different segments, the book itself. You know, you start off with the history of Iwata and sort of where his beginning originated from. Mm -hmm. But then right away, you get into his management style and how he looked at employees and how he interacted with them, not only as a as a manager and a supervisor, but as a, a friend and confidant and a colleague. You know, I finished the book and I said, wow, this is why I want to be going forward as a librarian. Like, I want to be Iwata-san, uh, except in, in the Prince George Public Library. So That's amazing. Yeah, just to think that the, yeah, the reason you picked up the book was your, your passion and interest for Nintendo. And it led you on a very different journey and apparently quite a personal journey. Yes, uh, which is surprising because it, it's... It is a, a nonfiction title. Right. When I started it, I will admit it felt a bit dry. And then it's because you make those personal connections. And it's because you have in some way at some point in time have likely played the Nintendo title. Mm. That as you read through, there's going to be that thing that just connects with you. Right. And snaps into place. You know, my all time favorite quote, if I can share. Please. Uh, so from the, the rich words of Iwata himself. And he has little words of wisdom throughout the book. He says, on my business card, I am a corporate president. In my mind, I am a game developer. But in my heart, I am a gamer. Wow. And so I think that really speaks volumes and really stands out to me as a gaming librarian. Without spoilers, can you describe Ask Iwata in three words? In three words? Uh, inspirational encouraging mm. and enlightening wow that's amazing i know i even was astounded right there by the wisdom of choosing those three <laughs> words thank you for limiting me to three words knowing that i'm a chatty person it makes me sound <laughs> much smarter <laughs> we ask it in every episode so it's just it's a really nice effect too and yes yeah, some people do sneak in little bonus words here and there What are some other books that you would recommend if somebody enjoyed Ask Iwata? Oh, well, Ask Iwata is, is certainly, it's one of a kind and it's it's taken a while. So this is based off of YouTube interviews that you can find. So if you're not a big textual reader, these certainly do float around. And it had been a while in translation before it finally came over here. If you've enjoyed Ask Iwata, though, uh, I would certainly recommend... Uh, well, the last book I read, uh, being The Console Wars, that one is really actually, for as much as I'm a gamer, I had not been into gaming books until the pandemic started. And I, I realized that there's an entire world of these really rich nonfiction titles that aren't just Minecraft 101. Right. Joys of being the teen librarian. 
that's the video game nonfiction section that you get to know really well, but that there's really rich, detailed histories. So Console Wars would be the first one that I would recommend. If you grew up as a 90s kid, a really phenomenal book discussing the console war between Sega and Nintendo. Wow. That occurred and I lived through. Um, <laughs> you survived. Yeah, I survived. Oh, my goodness. Survivor. I picked my side and, well... <laughs> Ultimately, we know what happened to Sega as a console manufacturer. But outside of that, uh, Jason Schreier, uh, who's also a podcaster, I've really been enjoying uh, his materials recently. So he does, uh, similar to Iwata, it's the uh, deep dive into game development. Uh, Iwata sort of does it with very uh, rose-tinted glasses, whereas Jason Schreier looks at the more contemporary critical side of it you know the the need for crunch in game development the impact that that has mm. very insightful things to to say about that industry and then outside of that really uh my my all-time favorite recommendation the legend of zelda hyrule historia i am a complete sucker for those ridiculously oversized art books right that just detail everything Excellent. about these games and so i have grown up playing the legend of zelda for, for, for many, many years. I, I, I cannot say enough about that. Just art books. Whatever stands out to you. And we have a fantastic selection here. It's not only Zelda. <laughs> There's, you know, ones on Bioware and Final Fantasy. Absolutely inspirational if you're looking for inspiration to draw. Like, literally draw from. Yeah. Uh, the Final Fantasy ones are, are great. But it's just nice to see that perspective. Yeah. How games go from being words to being drawings on a flat surface to suddenly existing in these rich moving fluid planes of yeah. motion yeah that it's you're something... that you're active in as well exactly like, like animation in movies you're a passive observer but yeah when games you are you're a part of it and who doesn't love knowing the nitty gritty about Master Sword can do so much hit damage when you have full heart canisters compared to <laughs> when you're missing half caster? For the gamers out there, they will know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. Go so good. Uh, yeah, you basically started speaking another language to me, but that's okay. We have a little game to play, Oh! Um, if you like. It's called This or That, and I'm going to give you two options, and you have to choose one as quick as you can. So if you're ready, here we go. Hardcover or paperback? Hardcover. Ebooks or audiobooks? Audiobooks. Okay. Audiobooks, yeah. Uh, bestsellers or classics? Oh, uh, I know. No. I know. Now I'm running through all of them bestsellers. A library books or bookstore? Bookstore. Mario or Sonic? Oh. <laughs> I know. That was um. Me. Can it, oh. <laughs> this is harder. This is the hardest one yet. It is. Uh, Mario. Xbox or PlayStation? Xbox. East Coast or West Coast? Uh, We're really challenging you today. I'll go East Coast. Trains or planes? Planes. Rain or snow? Rain. You did so well. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, as well as I could. That... <laughs> that was the hardest part of the interview. We've talked for twenty minutes, and then this, this, uh, that's the hardest game I've ever played. Uh, yes, it's mean. If you've enjoyed the wittiness of Chris the Gaming Librarian and the many ways I can shoot myself in the foot by picking bookstores over libraries, um, if you've enjoyed this sort of humor, I have recently picked up. Twitch streaming, twitch.tv forward slash Chris the Gaming Librarian. So very easy to remember from this episode itself. Thank you for every week. I do three episodes. So I do everything from game reviews to just talking about games to add to your collection to something very similar to this in a segment that I call Gaming Narratives, where I like to talk with gamers, whether they're friends or family or random strangers from around the world, asking them what were their favorite memories of the first games that they ever played. And some of the stories that you get to hear are really fun and exciting. So twitch.tv forward slash Chris the Gaming Librarian. If you want to come check it out. Or if you're not on Twitch, YouTube under the same title, Chris the Gaming Librarian. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you so much. Oh, no, thank this you. This wonderful. Thank you for listening to Read This Book, a Prince George Public Library podcast. Please join us every two weeks to discover a new book or visit pgpl.ca to explore our catalog.